Hey, what is up, guys? It's your boy, Wife Beater Speed here. No, that's not my life philosophy. That's that's the name of the shirt. Hopefully YouTube doesn't demonetize me now. Don't do that, guy. Okay, either way, we're going to be watching Phoenix. Basically, this is a game I played. It's an offlane game. So the point of this video is to help you guys become the best possible offlane player. We're going to be focusing on the first 15 minutes of the game, how to get farmed, how to recover, how to get kills early on. So, okay. All right, before we get into the main part of the video, I do want to let you guys know that I'm not only posting videos here on YouTube, I also frequently post videos on the website. If you don't know what I'm talking about, almost every single day I'm posting a new video to the Game League website. We're going to teach you guys in depth about how to get to the next level. So if you want to become absolutely broken, click the link down below and sign up. This is a match where things were not going well, right? Our lanes were pretty terrible. If you look at my mid lane was Huskar versus Earth Spirit, Enigma versus Void. These matchups are terrible and then I got roamed on by the Monkey King. And so the game was really, really hard. Right? Really difficult. However, we end up winning this match in 20 minutes and their Huskar breaks this item. So, okay. A couple of things I want to talk about. This is the first strategy I want you guys to implement. If you're playing a ranged hero that doesn't survive gang spell or wants to free farm and you're against the hero that does not flash farm jungle, right? I'm against Dragonite. Does Dragonite flash farm jungle? No, he does not. And so if I keep the lane back, right, he will not farm nearly as quickly. And so you'll see, I actually put an emphasis on not shoving the lane. And there's a lot of people who think this is a bad idea because it means that you're showing. It also means that if you TP to a lane and you haven't cleared the wave, then uh, you'll miss the wave. And that is the reason to push the wave. So if you're trying to determine whether or not you should static the wave because you don't feel comfortable pushing up, this game was really bad, I didn't feel comfortable pushing up. That is how I look at it, right? I'm gonna hold the wave back if I don't wanna really TP, if I think the game is too difficult in that regard and because I think that the Dragonite can't really flash farm jungle, so he needs these lane creeps, right? And you'll see, he actually steps up here and he makes this cycle play to hit the tower. We don't kill him because we were like really far behind, um, but like he gets really low, right? And I think, does he die to his smoke shortly? Yeah, but we get the lane back and you notice my net worth is only 300 behind the DK, so I'm feeling pretty good. On top of that, because he extended far to hit the tower and for the creep wave, right? I've pulled the wave back. The only reason this guy is here is because I've done this. And this results in a very nice kill in the, on the Dragonite. So holding the wave back, paying dividends. Uh, gets me a lot of farm, gets the wave back, gets us a DK kill. So I can't suggest it enough if the game is difficult and your hero doesn't push up well. Now, Phoenix isn't the worst at that, but okay. Next thing I'm going to do, you can see I'm looking to TP bot. Why? I'm at my hero's peak. Right? Phoenix at level 7 is very strong. It's like playing Primal Beast. Around this level, you're really strong. However, some offlaners, maybe like an Underlord or a Tidehunter, wouldn't want to do this, right? They would want to just take the tower, kind of farm their area. They're not as strong. But because of the fact that my hero is strong, I'm really watching the map. On top of that, my Earth Spirit was farming my lane, which kind of helps me make this decision. It's easy for me to say, okay, I want to let this guy farm. I'll let him recover. My mid earth spear was very under level. Uh, so I decided to TP in. I told my team to go on this Huskar and we find a really nice Huskar kill. I think we don't get anything after that, but that's okay. I don't mind breaking down the lanes in a bad match because our team wasn't having a good game. I don't necessarily want my Faceless Void to just play against Enigma 50-50 for a long period of time because Eidolons are very good against Faceless Void. So by being down here, it actually causes issues for this Enigma because he doesn't really like my hero due to Fire Spirits being pretty good against Eidolon. So the next thing I do is farm up some neutrals. I just farmed a Mud Golem camp, now I'm farming this camp. The reason why I'm doing that is I want to make sure I complete the remainder of our neutral items. I personally think neutral items are really broken. I see neutral items as about 700 to 1000 net worth, right? That's significant. And so if your team doesn't have three of those, you're, sac for, you're sacrificing 2000 net worth. And you might be like, speed, you're crazy. But just look at these neutral items. What is better, guys? Seeds of Serenity or a Bracer? I would take Seeds of Serenity any day of the week, any day of the week. And if a Bracer is 500 gold, then Seeds of Serenity, if it's much better, is at least 700, if not more. And so just think about how much value you're sacrificing if you don't jungle. And keep in mind, who's jungling on my team? Not Void, really. He's not that good at it. Not Earth Spirit. So it's really only me. So I wanted to get my team's neutral items. But okay, we hit our level eight. We got our Veil. Uh, the game slows down for a bit. Basically, at this point, we were looking to make a move, but we didn't know exactly where. My team decides to hit the portal, and I actually think this was really, really smart. I didn't think about it in the moment, but this tier one top is still alive. And because this tier one top is still alive, it's likely someone will play this area and defend it. And as a result, we're able to find this Dragonite, and that sets up into a major, major team fight win. 
right? We lead him with the fire spirits. You can see I'm kiting the outside. I just didn't want to get black hole. I see the Pugna TPing in and we hit a sick Chrono on a two. Easy fire spirits on the outside. I think here I egg. I probably should just sunray. It's I don't know why I egg first. I should definitely sunray and then egg, right? Uh, I would say sunray is frankly more value at this point. And now after this team fight win, we're feeling really good. We finish off the Pugna and the game is good. And so the main takeaways here are if you have a decent lane, right? Or the game is really hard, look for opportunities to push dives and break down the lanes. If your team is feeding in multiple lanes, making this TP play to help them out is extremely valuable. I know it might sound really straightforward, but staying in your lane is usually the best option in Dota. And I'm not just saying that, right? When I'm playing off lane in 80 to 90% of games, I sit in my lane as long as I can so I can farm up my timings so that when I do rotate, it's very impactful, it's very strong. So from there, we slow down the pace of the game again. We're gonna farm up some neutrals here. I don't wanna take the stack, it's way too inefficient, but I knew my team had some triangle stacks and we're very close to Shiva's. And a big mantra I have for you guys, like, or, or just my coaching students when I am coaching them, and by the way, that is something I wanna mention, guys. Uh, I do private coaching on the side, one-on-one -on -one coaching over Discord calls. Most of my students really enjoy it and return for second coaching. We tend to have a great time. And so if you're interested in that, hit me up on Discord. Uh, my tag is speed hashtag 3853. That is the username uh, and speed has three is Okay, so getting back into this triangle play, when I'm farming up the triangle, something I really put an emphasis on is, is it for a very important timing? Because when you farm the triangle like this, you're taking a very defensive stance on the map. I'm not helping my Earth Spirit get kills. I'm not enabling Hoodwing to get a kill. I'm enabling, frankly, nothing besides my own net worth. And so there has to be a really good reason to do something like this, right? And it's because of the Shivas. I told my team, the Shivas is the timing. It's a really great Shivas game too. It's a great Shivas game because they have Jingu for Monkey King. Sometimes not this game. They have a Dragonite. Obviously I'm reducing his healing. They have a Huskar, they have Pugnote uh, Life Drain, right? And then of course it just protects the egg naturally with the attack speed A we slow. And so this is a great game, of course, to complete the Shivas. And we have so much magic damage in the Maelstrom from Void. And then of course my teammates are magic. And so I convince them to slow down the pace of the game. I tell them, guys, I'm chilling. I'm gonna farm on my Shivas, let's go. And it's important to communicate timings for two reasons. Number one, so your team doesn't feed. And number two, so they have hope. When they understand your vision and they can believe in your vision, it allows people to stay calm and make plays. I also said, smoke when my Shivas is coming, right? And you align all this together, farm with the stacks, get a 15 minute Shivas, which is extremely early. And now this Huskar is ready to break his items because he dies again in the mid lane due to a nice smoke, very well timed. Uh, we get the mid tier one off of this. I told my team to hit the tower. Right, so we get the tier one off of this. Gonna push out the mid lane real quick. At this point, I think we wanted to slow down the pace of the game, kind of just play around Chrono. Uh, just look for opportunities. We have these great top wards. And of course, playing Vision is often the name of the game. So I wanted to sell the gank here. So it's very important that I don't instantly run through the creep wave. And by doing that, my Earth Spirit finds the angle. <laughs> Huskar dies. Again, and he's super tilted because he dominated his lane, right? This guy destroyed us, but I TP bought him, shut him down there. My team makes the great decision, which I followed them on, uh, to take the portal top. We win a team fight against him there. Then we hit our Shivas, we find him with a great smoke mid, and then we play our wards. Everything comes together, right? TP, paying attention to your side lanes when you're farming up your lane. After that, right, uh, working together with your team to pressure tier ones. When you're having a good game, Look for the fights around the tier one. Don't siege the tier one. Look for fights around the tier one. It's a very important distinction to make uh, because if you don't, you're just gonna hit towers and say, oh, Speed told me to go near tier ones when uh, when I'm trying to make plays with my team. And I mean, that's just not the vision. But right, that's gonna be about all for today's video. I wanted to keep it short, sweet, simple, give you some very aggressive tips for you guys to improve your game. If you enjoyed, smash the like button down below, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.